All right, so this is gonna be my walkthrough, my overview of the Zebra Now rentals. Okay, first of all, I apologize for any of the other video. I'm not a professional at this. I'm just realized that there's not that much information out there yet. And I wanna give everybody the opportunity to look at this kind of stuff before paying for their first month. As some people, this might not be ideal with some of the issues with these. However, overall, I'm very happy with it. I had quite a few issues originally. I actually ordered mine at the beginning of December when they were still trying to get everything going for Arizona because I'm Arizona based and they didn't have everything ready. So I just got this about a week ago. I, I believe it was February 11th, which was a Tuesday that I actually got this. Although I did pay for it and it was all supposed to be delivered the first week of January. So they were a little bit behind. Originally, I did have issues with their support team, not getting emails back, not getting updates, but they did eventually start giving me more information on what was going on, and they had issues with the registration of these, and that's one of the biggest problems that I have. So, this is the Arizona version. It's going to be different than most states. Like California, they actually go up to 30 miles an hour. Now, the problem with the Arizona ones is that these are classified as a Class 2 electric bicycle. Okay, which means that these are now maxed out at 20 miles per hour. So what they did is they made it to where there are only two gears, which I will go through all of the options on this and all the different controls, but this only has a one and a two gear. So, and you can go straight into second gear and just keep on going. The fastest I've been able to go with this is 21 miles an hour on flat surface. It has no issues whatsoever climbing any hills at all which is actually quite a surprise, but yeah, some pretty steep hills and it had no problems at all. And that's one reason why I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, 20 miles an hour doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a hell of a lot better than walking. And also even the electric bills out here, which really aren't that bad, you know, it, it literally cost me like 30 cents to charge the battery all the way up, which is not bad at all. And it does state that it takes four and a half hours. I've noticed that it typically takes at least three hours to charge and it's taken as long as five hours to charge. So I haven't really made a list on how to go through this. So I'm just gonna start jumping to one piece to another. Another regard to the charging is that I'd also noticed that even when you charge it on the charger provided, it does not charge it all the way up. So, the key itself is nothing special. It's just a standard key, no smart key or anything like that. It is double-sided. So there's one key provided for the actual Zebra Edition. And another key, which we'll get to, goes to the rear box, which it appears that all of the Arizona models were included with the cell phone holder, the mirrors, of course, and then also the rear box. Something else that I did not notice on their other models is that this does actually have an option to pedal by foot just like a normal bicycle, which may be part of the classification for it. I did not notice that on any of the other models that I looked at online prior or recently, but that is something interesting. They also have these pegs here, which I actually like, which it just makes it more comfortable to ride it. Okay, so first off, the actual ignition itself. Okay, so you simply put the key in, you turn it to the right, just one click, it doesn't go any further and the display turns on. So now the bike is on. This does have daytime running light, which I don't really agree with because it does utilize a lot more power, I would assume, you know. You don't really are required to have that, so I would prefer to save the power, but it is what it is. One issue I have noticed is the fact that the trip meter resets every time you turn it off. So if you charge the battery or if you turn it off, by turning the key and turn it back on, that trip meter will reset, which is kind of a pain because it's harder to keep track of, you know, when you're making short distances on the battery charge, it won't really communicate to you. You won't be able to figure it out very easily without keeping a log book or something on how many miles you've gone on that charge per se. It would be a lot better to just reset the trip meter every time the battery's charged, okay? So then the speed will come up in the center, of course. You got the battery level here, I've had no issues with the battery. Matter of fact, I think I'm actually getting more than 50 miles of use out of it. And it does get up pretty quick, really. I mean, it really does. So I've gone a total of 69 miles already, and I've had it less than a week now. Today's Sunday, and I got it Tuesday. 
So in order to put it into gear, literally, it just has this little side piece here, which looks complicated and I had some issues, but so if you have it pointed outwards, okay, that will put it into second gear. So literally to go into first gear, you have that out and then you click the little side button there and that will put it into first gear, okay? At first I didn't quite understand because then I thought, oh, well, okay, if you push that in, then it's, you know, then it goes into second gear, okay? But if you were to press that side button again, then it's in park. So that's how you're gonna differentiate the two. So there's really not much of a point. So now that's out and you click the side and it goes into first. You push that in, it's into second. And if you push that, it goes back into park. Or you could just leave it pushed in, which is what I do, and it just automatically goes into second gear, which has no issues whatsoever. It appears to just go from first to second if you're in second gear. It makes it easy. Then you don't have to s switch it for no reason, really. Something else I noticed that kind of set me off a little bit is so on the display here, it says ready, which means it's ready to go. When you put your hand on the brake, which it has two different brakes, then it actually shows a little motor signal there and the air, the tire air pressure. Okay, I'm assuming that's because it turns it off. The brake's applied, so now it's not running. The front light is still on, but I just thought that was a little weird. It kind of sets you off when you're first doing it. Okay, but once you let off the brake, then it's in the ready position again, ready to go. Okay, that battery indicator is always on. I'm assuming that means that the battery is discharging. You know, that kind of sets you off when you're first starting it as well. And then you also got your turn signals here. All right, so the turn signals is really touchy as well. I really don't like them because it's really quite a pain in the ass. All right, so with the turn signals, the turn signals are down here on the bottom on the driver's side. So with this section here, which you'll see on the display hopefully, so you push it off to the right hand side when you're going and it will turn on the indicator. When you when it is daylight, it is very difficult to actually see that. Oftentimes I find myself having to use one of my hands in order to cover up the sunlight just to be able to see it. Okay, now it does not automatically turn off because after you make your turn, then you have to again come over here and just barely click it towards the center and it will turn it off. It does take a little trial and error. I was having issues where it was just going from one turn light to the other turn light but after a while, then you just kind of get the feel for it and it starts working. So you just gotta barely click it. I did have a few issues, but it wasn't that difficult. And the turn signals, which I thought was a little odd as well. I figured this rear carrier would light up as well, but this is just a reflector. That's all this is. That's, it doesn't light up or anything else. Okay, but down here it does light up and especially at night it is extremely visible so it will actually light up the bottom of the carrier and I'll probably do an add-on video of the lights at night but I'm pretty happy with the lights okay and the same thing goes for the front light so that's the turn signals there okay and then this is the headlight option okay so the headlight is controlled just on this switch there's no other special button here that I've been able to discover at all. This is actually the horn. So this entire section here controls the horn. But this green button here on the pass on the driver's side, which would be the left-hand side, you push, like I said, it has the daytime running light. So you could just leave that outwards and it'll just be the standard light at all times. Some trouble focusing there. Okay, but if you push that in, then that actually turns the brights on. So also I have driven at night for several hours and had no issues at all. I did not have to use the brights at all, but on some of the bike trails I did decide to just because. But it is actually pretty bright. Just the standard light comes out pretty good at night. Okay, so that's the lighting there. Now I did have some issues with the mirrors that came. So the mirrors are focused on here multiple ways. So the mirror itself, I did have to tighten these up because this came brand new with zero miles, which I actually appreciated. But so there's a tiny little Phillips back here on the back side. So when I first got them, they were loose. So I, cause I took it out right away, of course, and they were fumbling all around. So make sure that you get a Phillips and you adjust these properly. Matter of fact, for the first couple days, I actually carried a Phillips with me. Now, 
the other part is is later down on here then they actually have a little tiny nut looking thing that you can use a crescent wrench on and that controls the swivel on it so you could actually just where the stand comes you know how far back it is and how far forward it is now i did have to go through and tighten that up on the right hand side only so the left hand side was okay i did have to tighten up the mirror itself but the stand was okay this right hand side actually started to irritate me because i was quite a while quite a ways away because one day i actually drove almost 40 miles in total more than 17 miles each direction on a bike trail along the canal out here in phoenix and this entire side started falling apart when i'm going down the road so this adjusting screw here which again is with a crescent wrench or some i don't know the exact size i just use a crescent wrench i might post that in the actual description or add a, that measurement on for you but i did have to adjust that so i did have to tighten that down after i got home after that longer trip then i had to tighten this down i had to hold the stand here and tighten it at the same time and i also had to adjust this mirror as well with the phillips screw that's on the back hand side okay the phone itself is actually really interesting so this was already tight for me there is the screw on the side of it which is actually an allen key i did not have to adjust that and it's actually really stable so it's kind of a pain in the ass but it at least holds your phone in there very well to where it doesn't really bounce around at all and then also the interesting part with this is you can adjust this to go to the side you could also you know put it in different formats you could push it forward you could pull it back it has a lot of adjustments there which is really handy and it, that is just perfect placement for me at least for when you're going down the road you know you, utilizing some type of maps or tracking service when you're riding the bike around so that's the primary functions there now i don't know if all of you realize this or not but also it's been in second gear this whole time which is fine it's not a big deal i wanted to leave it on However, this is the actual throttle on the right hand side. Now, nothing happens on the left hand handlebar at all. That doesn't move at all, but this is the gear. This is the throttle here, which is actually pretty sensitive. So I'm not gonna go ahead and take off on it. But especially if you start in first gear, it will take a minute to get used to it because you just turn it a little bit and it starts going pretty good. So. It catches up there to speed pretty well. I did do some videos earlier that I'm going to include in this. And I'm hoping they came out well enough for you to really see it on it climbing a hill and the throttle on it. But we'll see how that turns out. Now, this does not have any type of reverse. You have to walk it backwards. That's the only option. And also, when it is in gear, these pedals will go backwards. But, they, but if you have to push them forwards then you're going to be pedaling it. So especially when you're driving it around, you'll often have to move these and straighten them out. So that way they don't get in the way of you actually moving your feet onto the center or onto the pegs, which the pegs, like I said, I really like, I prefer it. It just makes it more comfortable, but you can kind of get a feel for it. Now that was the actual helmet that fell, which I was also going to show you. So the helmet that they provide is a, it's just a very basic cheap one i mean it definitely is dot approved and all that but it's just a basic bike helmet it has their name across it of course i got a medium which is what the m's for is actually pretty comfortable it does say zebra on the side i mean personally i'm kind of surprised that they put all their tags on all of their items and you'll see the battery in a second as well that has their tag on it you know, the zebranow.com, I don't mind promoting it. I'm very happy with this service. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to be pretty happy with it. Even with it only going 20 miles an hour rather than 30, it still gets you around town. I mean, like I said, I mean, I did a 40-mile round trip in about two hours, which is pretty good considering it only goes 20 miles an hour. And that was both on a bike trail and actually on a bike lane on public road. And one day I am going to get a actual action camera because the videos I'm doing is not that great while riding. And then you guys can actually get a better view of the actual riding capabilities of it and how it is to actually ride it. But it is just a basic helmet. It is pretty comfortable. It does take a minute to size it. So it's just a cheaper one. It doesn't even have a clip on it. It just has a strap that you adjust. 
you will have to play with it but it is pretty cushioned it doesn't get very hot out here in arizona with the helmet on you know legally you don't have to wear it zebra says that you should of course that you're supposed to but arizona doesn't actually have an existing law if you're over the age of 18 that you have to wear a helmet however i do prefer to mostly because of other drivers out here of course so there's that part there now to get to the battery tray the battery is actually underneath the seat here which i thought was kind of weird you know of course it's going to be in there but the way that you get to it i figured it'd be locked so you have to turn it off and you would literally just put your key in and then you turn it the opposite direction now when you do that and i'll do it again so that way you can see because the battery tray just opened up here so i'm going to turn the key off to the left hand side and open up the battery tray so this is the battery tray here i'll come off over to the other side and i have taken out the charger now normally there is a power cord here and there is the box the inverter box to actually charge the battery you need both of those to charge the battery i personally do not carry them with me because i've already driven around and i know the kind of distance it can get so i don't require to have to charge it on the go now if you do have to charge it at work or school or otherwise then yes i definitely carry it with you but it does weigh two or three pounds and i don't need the additional weight less weight the better and it just opens it up a little bit so you do have to turn this breaker here do not forget to do that it is possible for it to shock you or you get hurt or start a fire or something like that this will actually cut off all the power to the actual bike and that allows you to take the battery out do not forget to do that i don't want anybody getting hurt now again they have their zebra code up here which they do scan on delivery that is the actual basically the vin for the bike for zebra and then after that then this is still pretty stiff i've charged this probably three or four times now in the last week you know not all when i actually got the bike it was only at about 63 percent and i then i drove it that day and then a couple days later i charged it again so it's been like three or four charges now but this connector here is actually pretty stiff so i'm going to set this down i'll probably edit this out but it gets pretty stiff so you got to kind of rock it back and forth a little bit in order to actually get the battery out so i have not personally seen this type of connector before but it is a pretty hefty connector it, it's pretty thick which is a good thing so then the battery is actually disconnected and it's not that heavy so it has a little handle here which doesn't actually come up all the way but it comes up enough and it just lifts right out opens up the battery tray and you would typically take this along with the charger inside and charge it there's also another option on the front that i'll show here in a second and this is a pretty good sized battery but in all reality it probably only weighs maybe 10 pounds I mean, it's not that heavy, 10 or 15 pounds. And this is also what I was saying on the zebra part, because of course they got to get their marketing in and they marked it with zebra. And there is an actual sticker down here as well, which I don't think is a actual manufacturer sticker at all. It's just some of the basic go-tos on the battery itself, you know, temperature range and whatnot rated voltage 60 volt you know so on and so forth i did try to look this battery up to see if i could potentially personally buy a secondary battery but i was unable to find the correct battery for this i think it has a different one than the actual manufacturer but i'm not for sure because it would be you know the batteries if they're a couple hundred bucks it might actually be worth to get two of them you know it if that's worth it to you I would probably spend that couple hundred bucks just so that way I got two fully charged batteries just so that way I don't have to wait around for the other one. My other mo mode of transportation is actually a pickup truck that gets 10 miles to the gallon. So doing all these all the short distance trips, you know, up to the convenience store and whatnot is primarily what I'm using this for, which saves quite a bit when this battery goes 50 miles or more and it costs 30 cents to charge the batteries from zero. So when you put the battery back in, you just push that connector back in and then you got to turn this breaker back on.
and now the battery is back in there now the second option so when the battery is actually connected and I'll probably show it later as well so when the battery is in there you can take the charging box and the cord and you could plug it directly into this port here you do not have to remove the battery or turn the breaker off in order to charge it you could just leave that all alone and if you park it in your garage or in your carport or your backyard or something you could just plug it right into here it's got a pretty long cord maybe six foot cord and you could plug it right into an outlet and charge it that way as well and on the, I'll show the charger later on in the video and you know I don't really like it too much because it doesn't really have an indicator on it but it does turn you know red for charging green for fully charged and like I said when it is fully charged the charging module says that it's green and fully charged and it's been sitting on there for four and a half hours but yet when you put it back into the zebra then it only shows 97 percent or 98 percent charged which is probably just some type of safety or it's not reading the battery properly or something like that it's not that big of a deal i haven't seen a difference on its usability so that's the other method for that and these pegs you don't have to have out like i showed at the beginning of the video they do go back in and then you could just you know kick the little side button and they pop back out that's fully up to you and like I said, when you do pedal, it is pretty difficult. I don't prefer to do that. I mean, if you did screw something up and you don't have enough battery life on it, then of course you could pedal it, but it is a lot more difficult than a normal bicycle. And although it might look like two people could fit on this, I would not suggest it. Those pegs are not for a second person, which is what I think some people would think, but it's not. That is not what it's designed for. Uh, that is more so designed, so that way it just makes it more comfortable for the rider. The seat looks pretty big, and it is pretty long, but when you're actually sitting up on the pegs, you know, especially for long distance, you could actually almost get your back up to this, depending how tall you are, and it makes it a more comfortable ride. And I've also found it to where, when I first started riding it, I always had my hands on the handlebars, but now it's actually more comfortable if I just utilize the throttle with my right hand, and then I just have my left hand on my lap or otherwise now one of the other features of course is the rear box here so that's what the secondary key that they provide is it's just a standard little key nothing too fancy about it this box is not secure so this box is not waterproof and it is not that secure I want to make that pretty clear because I would not keep valuables in it now with this you have to have the key turned in order to pull up on that so it's more of a two-hand operation because it automatically goes back so the box is pretty big it really is so i actually have two different thermoses in here and they're pretty large from thermoses and it also has some headspace as well so i've actually taken this to go pick up some groceries before and had no issues i actually fit a pizza in here a loaf of bread you know you could get a gallon of milk in here you know and it's actually pretty large and even right now with both of these larger thermoses this is a 64 ounce thermos and the other one's a 40 ounce and it doesn't affect the driving ability it doesn't really affect the battery usage i mean it's it really doesn't make that much of a difference but even still i could still put the helmet in here and it will still actually close and without an issue you know it's not that big of a deal But like I said, this lock is not that secure. I would not store any type of valuables in it, and it is also not waterproof. So the battery tray does have a hole in it, if you look at that section. But this, do, and it does have a seal on the battery bay, but this does not. This has no seals on it whatsoever, so it's not waterproof. And then also it has these holes in the bottom. So this is not considered waterproof at all. And like I keep saying, it's not that secure. In all reality, somebody could walk up and I could just pull up on this a little bit, fit a little piece of metal in there and slide it over, or even the lock itself. You know, there's nothing fancy about the lock itself whatsoever. So keeping your phone or money or anything like that in there, I would not recommend, you know, unsupervised, of course. But it is pretty good space there. You know, perfect for, you know, taking lunch and thermoses with you, especially if there's a couple people more than capable.
which is a great benefit. Now the other part that I didn't quite go over is also the brakes. So the brakes are up here on the actual handlebars. So the right hand side where the throttle is, is the rear brake. Okay, you squeeze that down and that's typically what I use. I don't normally use the front brake, which is on the pat on the driver's side, the left hand side. The front brake, it works very well. So you can actually use a mixture of both or you could just use one or the other. You know, if you only use one, I would recommend the rear because then it doesn't really knock as hard. You know, if you hit them hard, it will stop. It has really good stopping power. So I've been going downhill at 35, 40 miles an hour, which is probably not recommended, but it came to a complete stop with no issues whatsoever. Now on the front, and also another note here is the headlight does appear to be some type of HID headlight. So I'm assuming that is something that will go out eventually, but it shouldn't be too bad. Now the front brake here is actually kind of interesting because it's not your typical bike brakes. So this is actually basically just like a motorcycle, just miniature. So this is not this is actually a rotor right there and it has brake pads. So one of the inclusions that Zebra has is it's maintenance free. So this is not exactly maintenance free. They do say that the tires and the brakes will need to be replaced on a regular basis and that they will let you know when, but also that can vary a lot. So depending on how you brake, you know, like I said, I use the rear brakes more, so those are probably gonna go out before the front brakes do. Now I know that Zebra is able to track the GPS, the mileage, the location, etc., And that is probably what they're gonna go on. You know, like every 5,000 miles, it needs the brakes replaced. But if you ride it on a daily basis for long distance or down steep hills and whatnot, these could actually go out a lot sooner than that, I would imagine. So that might be one issue. The tires, they were already aired up no issues whatsoever but these brakes are actually really good so they're actually slotted no issues whatsoever you know they actually had stickers on them when I got it like I said it was brand new no not not even a 0.1 mile on this when I got it and I haven't had any issues with the brakes or the tires I did actually check the pressure and the pressure was fine it does take a standard actual bike pump you could pump it up with a bike pump or you could actually take it to the gas station and utilize an actual air compressor but I didn't have any issues now they do state that you can contact them for customer service you know if you have a flat tire or you're having an issue with the bike I have not had to do that luckily so I can't really comment too much on that but I hope that service is good I'm assuming what they would do if you have such as a flat tire or something they will give you a recommendation on where to take it but I'm assuming since that is not a maintenance issue, it's not a typical wear and tear issue, if you got a flat tire, you're probably gonna have to pay for that repair or a new tire out of pocket. Now these tires are actually 2.75-10, okay, 14 by 2.75. Okay, these tires are available on Amazon relatively cheap, pretty cheap actually. So if you did have to pay for it out of pocket, it is completely, plausible for you to order it online and go take it to a tire shop and get it replaced out there's a lot of different scooter shops out here in Phoenix I'm not going to recommend any in particular but you won't have a difficult time finding these tires at all now also another thing is, is so this is ran by a chain just like a motorcycle or a bike you know the undercarriage was clean you know no issues all of these welds you know I don't know how well I can get them but you know, they're not perfect. You know, some of them actually look like they were definitely done by hand like this one here. That's pretty nasty for that to be machined. But you know, no, no issues with any of the welds really. You know, you can see that they got the temperature a little hot on that one, but at least it's welded together. You know, no significant issues there. Now all these parts here are plastic. I would not recommend working on it yourself as I'm pretty sure that they want some type of actual service record on them. Now, also, there's two different kickstands here. So I have this first one, which is the primary. This is what you'll typically probably use, which is on the left-hand side, okay, from the Zebra. And it literally just folds underneath. It's quite easy to get to, but also these bike pedals that I don't use really get in the way. So like I said, when it's out of gear, you can move these pretty easily, but they only go downwards. So it's really a pain to get to the actual 
kickstand sometimes. You know, they actually get caught on each other. It makes it quite a pain, you know? But there, so there's that option there, but also if it does need work done to it or if you prefer to set it in such a fashion, there's also this piece here, which you're gonna put your foot on. This is on the left-hand side again, and that lowers a stand underneath on both sides. You will grab your hand on the actual aluminum casting there. That's by the battery tray. That's all aluminum frame there. And you will pull up on it. And that will put it up on the full stand there. Okay. So that will take the rear tire completely off the ground. The front tire is still touching the ground, which it's supposed to. But, you know, you might just prefer to store it this way. You know, maybe it's in your garage or something and, you know, it might make more noise if somebody does try to steal it. But it's all your preference. Or if you're sitting it in mud or something and you don't want it to sink down or something, I don't know. And then to take it off, you could be nice and gentle and just let it off slowly. And there you go. But make sure you drop the helmet every single time too. You know, you just want to check its integrity and make sure you're not going to get your brain, your brain splattered across the pavement. But so that's a pretty good review there. If you guys have any other questions, just let me know. I'm going to go over a couple other things. You know, this part also is just a reflector. The rear brakes are actually just like the front. I originally thought they were actually drum, but they're not. They're just the disc brakes just like a car, just like a motorcycle, just like some bikes, some higher end bikes will actually have the full disc brake like that. You know, actually pretty interesting. You know, in all reality, I think you could definitely replace these out yourself. However, like I said, at least, you know, you don't actually own this, so they probably prefer a service record. Something I did also notice early on is that the license plate holder is not level i don't know if they do that on purpose or not but it is not level with the bike it's not centered kind of bothers me personally but you don't even use it in the arizona at least so something i am going to contact zebra about is whether or not you can register these so arizona law okay like i said this is a class 2 electric bicycle max of 20 miles per hour i would highly suggest you actually go online research the information in your state you know, because there's multiple states that they're working in now. But in Arizona, at least, this is a Class 2 electric bicycle, 20 mile an hour max. And this is classified as a bicycle, okay, with an electronic motor. So you can ride this anywhere most bikes are allowed. You know, there are a few trails that do not allow any motorized vehicles whatsoever. I personally have you know, taken it all kinds of different places. Now, in Arizona, at least, you can drive, you cannot drive these on sidewalks, but you can drive them on public roadways. So, to an extent. So, in Arizona, the law that I have looked up so far is that you have to register these in order to take them on public, on major public roads. You know, we're talking most of the roads out here, most of the major roads are 45 miles an hour. You can take them on there if they are registered. You do have to take some type of paperwork into DMV. You do have to pay a slight fee. I think it's like $17 or something and you register this. I don't believe you have to have insurance on it. I opted for the zebra insurance for an extra $19 a month just in case somebody hits me or somebody does try to steal it but you should definitely look up the actual laws. I've taken this on some of the major roadways to an extent, and I haven't had any issues. I've actually talked to Glendale PD before recently about what their thoughts on it were and you know what their recommendations and their understanding of the law is. And as long as you're on the far right-hand side of the roadway and you utilize your turn signals, they don't really have an issue. Of course, you can't take it on a highway or Grand Avenue or anything like that. But you can definitely use this anywhere there's bike lanes. You could use it on residential zones like I primarily use it on and almost any of the bike trails as well. I have driven this both on concrete and on dirt trails. Uh, it, you just gotta watch it on the dirt trails. Luckily I have not dropped this at all. But on the dirt trails, this does get up to 20 miles an hour and, and you know that definitely is pretty good. And these tires, they don't completely touch the ground I wouldn't say. So it can get a little bit of slippery. If there's a little bit of, you know, wet sand or mud, it definitely gets slippery and you could easily 
drop it. You could easily fall off of it. So I would definitely be careful with that part. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I definitely plan on keeping it. Like I said, there were definitely issues when they were trying to get them in here in Arizona since I had already paid. I was actually told the first week of January and that didn't happen. I had issues with the support team originally, but now that was fixed and I finally got it, you know, over a month afterwards. But overall, I'm pretty happy. And what they did with Arizona, I don't believe that the rear carrier and the cell phone holder was actually originally included on all of the models, but they did include those. I wasn't expecting the rear carrier, but I believe that they included that with all the Arizona models that I seen in the delivery truck because of the 20 mile an hour. Plus on the second month payment, I don't know if this will be for everybody, but they did make it to where I already paid my $99 plus the $19 for insurance for the first month and my second month, since they have to regulate these two 20 miles an hour, my second month is gonna be half off, which is beneficial, but at the same time, my third month, my fourth month, my fifth month, so on and so forth, is still going to be $99 plus $19 for the insurance, which I think is a little messed up because in California and what they were marketing to me originally was the fact that it went 30 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, and it doesn't. And yet they still wanna charge me the same price for a more regulated model which sucks, but at the same time, I think it's very worth it. You know, I've already it's already basically paid for itself in less than a week. And it's quite fun to actually ride around. We're actually going to be getting another one of these for my wife, and it, it's a great team kind of thing, and you know, you could definitely get out and about more often. It costs virtually nothing to actually utilize this other than the monthly fee. I do recommend the insurance just in case, but yeah definitely get an outlook on these if you guys do have any questions go ahead and comment i will watch the comments i will post some more videos i do apologize if the actual on-road videos didn't come out very well i'll still post them along with this video but i do plan on doing some other videos and hopefully they come out better so i'll be getting another camera this week and be doing some actual on-road videos so you can see more of its performance and riding it along. But that should conclude. All right, so this is the ninth section for the lighting and a couple of other things I forgot to include in the other video. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the scooter on, which I'm the queue off to the right-hand side. This display is nice and lit at night. Okay, and the headlight automatically turns on to its standard mode, which also the front does not turn with the wheel. Okay, that front light is actually pretty bright. So you can see a little bit of an example right there, which that's approximately 30 feet in front of me. Okay, and then also on this indicator here, it turns to the front. Also on this indicator over here, for the actual headlights, you push that in and it will turn the bright on. Like I said, the back box does not actually glow at all. However, the rear does and it's actually pretty bright. So there's that right there which like I said, it's pretty visible and also it has all the reflectors on it. And then you turn the actual blinkers on. And so you have the actual blinker there, which about 10 feet back. And then also on the front handlebars, which is also something else I didn't include earlier. So then on the front handlebars it has the flashers as well. So let me straighten that out which makes it pretty visible, especially for night driving. And then same thing on the other side. And even on the side, you can see them.
one of the other pieces I forgot to mention earlier as well. One of the other items I forgot to mention earlier as well is actually the bag holder and then also the USB charger. So right next to the key in the center of the front here there's this little piece here that's actually designed for you to attach bags to. I've actually used this both for that thermos and then also for actual bags. It's a little difficult when you're taking a corner like with a plastic bag hanging but it's actually really handy. This cup holder here comes in handy as well. I personally vape and my vape fits in there perfectly and doesn't cause any problems. It has a lip on it so nothing so it's not going to come out. And then also you can fit like a water bottle. Fountain drinks won't really fit in there very well because of the height clearance but water bottles will. And then also we have the USB here as well. So this USB just has a little rubber piece there. It has a single USB and then also I did get a charger with it. I did actually get a charger with this model which then you plug it into that and then what I do is I loop it onto this part way so I'll tuck some of it into the cup holder run it through there and then have it run up to my actual device another thing with the lights which might throw some people off is when you actually turn the key off the lights stay on so they actually do turn off automatically but it does take a moment so after about 30 seconds, yep, then they go ahead and turn off all of them, and you're good to go. So this is the charging module for the Zebra electric scooter. It's pretty compact. This is a standard 12-inch roller here. It comes in at about 7.5 inches in length there. That's just over three inches in width. This actually fits in the battery bay, but I don't personally ride around with it because I don't need to charge it on the go and it weighs several pounds. So it's very simple to utilize this. So this end here that's actually connected to this inverter goes right on top of the battery that's also shown in the video. This would also be the connector piece that you would plug in on the scooter if you charge the battery inside. So if you were to charge it from the scooter without taking the battery out, you would just plug this into that port. So it doesn't come with any instructions on it, but I would recommend actually plugging it into the wall before connecting to your battery. So this is a standard cable here that it comes with. You would just plug it directly into the port on the opposite side and then connect the other side to your battery. Now the only indicator it has, which I really don't like, is it just has a single LED here. Green means that it's charged and in standby. Red means that it's charging. And it has that breakdown on the bottom here. So if you look at the bottom, Zebra has their marketing there as well. And it has all the information on here. So there's the charging indicator, green on, standby, red on charging, green on, fully charged, red, flash, means there's a battery error. If you are getting a battery error and there shouldn't be anything wrong, it might just be your adapter is not plugged in properly or all the way on there, or it's not plugged into the wall all the way. Another issue is, is it does only draw 4 amp max, so it shouldn't blow any breakers or anything like that. You could plug it into practically any outlet. And that's pretty much the charging right there. I wish that it did have a digital display for the indicator, for the actual battery level. And as previously mentioned, even after charging a battery from 20%, it took over four hours. And then also, every time I have charged it, the battery, when you put it back into the Zebra, it only comes out to about 97, 98% charged. That could just be a battery indication level error or some type of software error. I'm not seeing any difference on its performance, but it just kind of sucks when it does that. Something else that I forgot to mention earlier on was also the fact that it came with those other inclusions on the scooter itself, and they also included a multi-charger cable here as well. 
So it has a single USB that actually goes into the scooter. And then it has the adapters for all the different types of cell phones. So it has the actual micro USB for a lot of the Android devices. And then it has the lightning charger for Apple iPhones. And then it also has the USB-C, which is the one that I personally use, which is handy. It does kind of suck that it has all three, but also if you carry around an iPhone and an iPad, you know, you could charge both of those or different devices on the go. It's very compact. You could throw it right into the carrier or the cup holder on the scooter, and it doesn't get in the way at all, even with the multiple adapters on it. The total overall length is approximately six feet. It includes both sides of the cable itself. There is manufacturer stickers and barcodes on the charger, which I have not looked up yet, but I was unable to locate an actual battery. Not of the exact same size at least. 